Hello, hello, you guys, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another story time brought to you by ABC Read and ABC Learn, in which we are here to help you develop and nurture that love of reading in every child as well as every adult. How are you all doing out there today? Evening, real early in the morning, real late at night, whatever time it is around the globe, I hope that you all are doing absolutely spectacular. And I hope that you all have read or you're planning to read for at least 30 minutes. All right, we before we get started, I am going to share with you guys something very simple. Um, I had, this was on my mind because I was having a conversation uh, with someone um, earlier today and shout out to Amatula, by the way. And we were talking um, about how easy it is to get our children into reading and how it's not rocket science. A lot of times people get caught up in you know, oh my gosh, I got to have my child prepare for that third grade reading test. And oh my goodness, you know, I got to, you know, get them signed up for this or that. And of sure, there's nothing wrong with having them uh, be prepared, being proactive, right? You don't want anybody to come to you and say, look, your child is not doing well in reading. So if you're able to do things to get them ahead, that's great. But don't look at it as a chore. And that's my point. All you have to do is incorporate literacy daily and make it fun. So like, for example, even when I talk about reading for at least 30 minutes a day, now you have a lot of other, you know, different uh, places or organizations, they'll tell you 15 minutes or 20 minutes and see, and I just try to keep it real. All right. 30 minutes to me should be the least amount, but it can be broken up. You can do 10 minutes in the morning during breakfast, 10 minutes in the afternoon or 10 minutes in the evening. And sometimes you may not necessarily want to read from a book. You guys may decide, okay, you know what? We are going to check out the ingredients, um, you know, that is in this particular, um, you know, maybe, or, you know, let me scratch that. Ingredients is good, reading the labels. That's what I was trying to say. But um, also what came in my mind as well is reading a recipe together. Because especially now you have the kids home, you know, during the summertime. And so you want to be creative and think of things to keep them enthused, right? And you want to keep them doing things that are positive and, and not just busy, but doing some positive things, all right? Keeping them occupied. And so you guys can read a recipe together. And yes, as I started to say before, you can do something like read the labels. You can make that be a project. You can say, okay, you know what? I want you to go get five boxes out of the cupboard and five cans out of the cupboard. And I want you to uh, read the labels. And they may ask, well, what's a label? And you say, oh, okay, let me show you what a label is. Then you turn the can around or you turn the box around and then you start having them look at the ingredients, all right? And they start looking at how all the other stuff it tells you in there, how much fat is in there, how much salt is in there. So you're doing a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of learning right there. So in addition to the reading, they're also learning that, oh, these are things that I look for when I want to find out if something, you know, is healthy or not, or, you know, what are the different things in there, you know, that, you know, that I can eat, you know, because there may be some ingredients in there, you know, that you may not be familiar about, right? And then you can go and do some research, right? So it's a lot of different things that can come out of just that simple task alone, just reading the labels. So again, like I said, reading literacy can be incorporated throughout your day, throughout your child's day without it being rocket science. All right. So there. So now I am ready to read to you guys again out of this book, Fish in a Tree. All right. Now, this is chapter 34. So we are more than halfway done with the book, all right? And the title of this chapter is called Birth of a Star. And so again, a reminder for those of you who are not familiar with the story, Allie Nickerson, sixth grader, she's struggling with reading, all right? And she is dealing with a whole lot of stuff, all right? 
by her struggling with reading, her self-esteem has gotten lowered. All right. She feels embarrassed. Then she got a couple of girls in her classroom that she just want to just, you know, pop upside the head because they keep trying to bother her and be mean, you know. And so, and then, but she also has two good friends, Albert and Keisha. Now, Albert and Keisha, they have their different quirks about them or whatever. So they're not considered the popular kids, but guess what? They love who they are. All right. So I hope that you all are getting this from this book, that you love who you are with your mistakes, your quirks, whatever it is about you that you have, you love yourself. You always try to be the best version of yourself. But you make sure you love yourself. Don't try to be like nobody else. Don't let them little silly little kids in your classroom who, you know, they want to talk about, oh, you don't, you ain't got the new this. Or, you don't have the new that or whatever the case they want to say. You say, guess what? It doesn't matter because I love who I am regardless of what I have on. All right. So there, I just want to, you know, give y'all that little pep talk real quick. Are y'all ready? Begin. Birth of a Star. Keisha, Albert, and I walked to Albert's after school. Keisha and I asked if we could come over and see his house, and he shrugged and said, okay. The whole time my hand is in my pocket, holding on to that piece of paper. Possible. Albert's house is big but dark and dusty when we enter. There are piles of things everywhere, not papers like our house. I mean, piles of things with tubes and wires, things I don't recognize. His mom greets us. Hey, Albert, you have guests? Her tone tells me that this never happens. Yes, I do. These are my friends, Keisha Almond and Allie Nickerson. Allie and Keisha, this is my mother. Audrey Dubois, he says, waving at each of us, and she comes over and shakes our hands. Can I get you anything to eat? She asks, sounding nervous. Albert pauses. No, thank you. We'll just go upstairs. His mom says okay as we are already following him up a skinny, twisty staircase. What kind of host, Keisha begins, doesn't allow his guests to have food. Dang it, Albert. I wouldn't have had mine to some. It wouldn't be logical to offer you something that doesn't exist. But she offered it to us, Keisha says. He opens his backpack and begins stacking his books on his desk like a pyramid. I can assure you that the refrigerator is quite empty. In fact, it hasn't been plugged in for a week. Oh. Keisha says, her voice getting quiet. I'm sorry, Albert. I really am. Now I know why his mom's voice sounded funny when she offered and why he eats so much at school. Yeah, me too, I add. He turns surprised. Why? Keisha scrunches up her face. The look she gets when she really can't figure him out. Well, I say, because you don't have food or a refrigerator. It must be terrible to be hungry and not be able to eat. And it's probably embarrassing for you. Maybe. I mean, I think it would be, I guess. He tilts his head. Filling the refrigerator does not fall within the parameters of my responsibilities. Therefore, the lack of food therein would have no reflection upon me whatsoever. We are silenced. I don't know about Keisha, but I couldn't answer that for a million dollars. From the looks of her, I don't think she can either. I finally lift my gaze from his face to look around his room. Just a bed, a desk, and an empty trash can. The carpet and his blankets are all dark green but his walls have colorful posters, all science related. There's one I like the most, a picture of outer space, but with every color you can think of all swirled together with an orange glow off to the side. It's beautiful. 
I point at it. Albert, what is that? That is the birth of a star. The single most important thing that can happen in space. Well, the single most positive thing anyway. It's beautiful, I say. He stares at it. Indeed it is, he says, sitting down at his desk. Keisha laughs. You are going to be a star one day, Albert. You'll do something amazing. I don't like, he shifts in his seat. I don't wish to be in the limelight. Limelight, I ask. I don't like a lot of attention. Well, you better get used to it, Albert, Keisha says, because there is no way on God's green earth that you won't have boatloads of it when you go out and cure cancer or discover another planet or something. That's my hope. I want to change the world. Do something good. And then all of a sudden I feel sad as Keisha goes on about how famous Albert will be. How he'll be written about in history books and stuff. Hey, Keisha says poking me. Why so serious over there? I'm thinking about the things Albert and Keisha will do and how I can't even read. I can't tell them that, though, so I try to sound happier. I'm not that serious. Oh, yes, you are dead serious. You need to smile. I am smiling, I say. Well, someone better tell your face about it. I hesitate. Can I tell you both a secret? I ask, reaching into my pocket to touch my possible paper that I've carried since I got it. Yeah, of course. And you won't tell anyone? Yes. Now, what's the secret? We won't tell anyone because that's what the definition of secret is. Albert is quiet, but his head is tilted to the side. I, I have never really told anyone this, but I have a lot of trouble in school with reading and writing and, well, everything but math and art. Keisha laughs. <laughs> That's not a secret. And then I feel terrible. And I feel my eyes beginning to sting. I start walking away. But she pulls my sleeve and pulls me back. Albert looks upset. No, that's not what I mean. I mean that we know that. But it doesn't matter to us. However, Albert says, I do wish it was easier for you. We will not share your secret. Mr. Daniel says I have something called dyslexia which makes it hard to read letters. That's why I've been staying after school so he can help me. Keisha is wide-eyed. Extra school after school? That's terrible. I mean, terrible. I want to tell her I'd spend the night at school hanging upside down in the closet if I could just read. I don't mind. He's nice to help me. And will help you, Albert says. But I worry that maybe he can't help me, I say. And then I mumble. It, it makes me feel like I'll grow up to be a nobody. How can you say that, Keisha asks. Well, you'll probably have some big successful baking company and Albert will... Do whatever in the world Albert will do. And I'm just hoping to read a menu in a restaurant. Keisha steps up and puts her arm around my shoulders. You say he's going to help you, right? You say? Albert adds and then pauses to think that you'll grow up to be nobody. But logically, if nobody's perfect, well then, you must be perfect. 
perfect me? Uh, no, <laughs> I say. You are pretty perfect, Allie, Keisha says laughing. Do like Mr. Daniel says. Be yourself. Be who you are. You know, Albert says, I've wondered about that saying, and I can't ever find an answer anywhere on the internet. What do you mean, I ask? Be yourself. You always hear that. So, Keisha asks, well, Albert begins, what if you don't know who you are? I get what he means, I think. People ask you what you want to be when you grow up. I know what kind of grown-up I want to be, but I don't know who I am now. Albert stretches his legs out. There are always people ready to tell you who you are, like a nerd or a jerk or a wimp. I think I'll, it's hard not to believe the bad stuff. Look at it this way, Albert says. If you had to be in a tank of water with a killer whale or a stonefish, which would you choose? Well, duh. Who is going to choose a killer whale? Well, in the wild, killer whales never attack people. Like, never. A stonefish is way more dangerous with its 13 venomous spines. It's the words. If the killer whale were called the friendly whale, no one would be scared. And I think of words, the power they have, how they can be waved around like a wand, sometimes for good, like how Mr. Daniels uses them and how he makes kids like me and Oliver feel better about ourselves and how words can also be used for bad, to hurt. My grandpa used to say to be careful with eggs and words because neither can ever be fixed. The older I get, the more I realize how smart my grandpa was. Whoa, you guys. Oh, my goodness, y'all. This book is just phenomenal. I really, really absolutely love this book. And I love these little lessons that Allie Nickerson is learning, how they all are learning, her and her friends, Albert and Keisha, and how it's just so cool that she was able to get a cool teacher like Mr. Daniels, who has been able to bring out, extract, take out that good that he sees in Allie. So um, I hope you guys are getting the same lessons and many more, right? There are some other things in these chapters that I'm reading that I haven't mentioned that I like or things that I've noticed that you've noticed. And I hope that you guys are enjoying these stories as well. So until next time, you guys, I hope you guys remember to like, subscribe, and share our videos. And remember to please keep reading for at least 30 minutes a day. And I also want to say a special Eid Mubarak. That is the holiday that Muslims all over the world, over 1.8 billion Muslims all over the world are celebrating today. So our Eid Mubarak just means have a blessed Eid celebration, which is the holiday that Muslims celebrate after our month long of fasting of Ramadan. All right, so guess what, y'all? I can eat and drink now during the daylight hours. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, you guys, you guys take care. It's been fabulous reading to you guys. Remember to keep reading for at least 30 minutes a day. Like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Peace.